I'm going on a backpacking trip tomorrow night. Being in Southern California, winter's pretty much over what winter we do have. The bears in Southern California really don't hibernate, but they do tend to go back deeper into the forest and slow down. Now, um, I'm hoping to go back and catch some of them. I'm going to go some places where people rarely go through. Hopefully get some bear sightings. This is what I'll be taking with me. Okay, you got your jacks are better under quilt. Hammock gear over quilt. Uh, REI tie wear cook set with a snow peak stove. You got your uh, food. A thermal rest. Hennessy hyperlite. Steaks and guy lines. Hygiene. Um, lights. Oh, and a fishing kit. Folk Niven uh, A1. Sea to Summit dry sacks. I'll show you what I use those for. Sea to Summit towel. Extra pair of socks. A beanie. Thermals. Pants. And shirt. Long sleeve shirt. Gloves for night. Jacket. An Army canteen cook set. Walther P22. Uh, one of those drink straws. So I don't have to filter. If I'm thirsty, I can just take a quick drink out of the river. Trekking poles. This is the um, deluxe tarp to go over the Hennessy. This is a Tyvek and heat sheet. It's a homemade grill, radio, ace bandage, some more guy lines, a patch kit for the thermarest, bandana, Leatherman light, Cena Summit spork, Tenkara, um, a bear bell pocket watch my daughter gave me a Sawyer filter two bags and back flush pillow ULA circuit and camo and a trash bag when you uh, hammock camp you put stuff in your trash bag you can just use an extra strong trash bag and just tie everything up off the ground now the reason I'm bringing the thermal rest because when I'm above the tree line the Hennessy Hyperlite, almost any hammock, can be used as a bivy sack. I'll, I'll probably show you that because um, where I'm going, I don't know if there'll be some trees in the area. So I'll show you what this all looks like packed up. I wanted you to notice the overquilt, the underquilt, the pillow, my clothing, my, my spare clothing, um, and a few other items. Look at this. In this seat of some, some in this, uh, in this dry sack, I have my under quilt and my over quilt and the nice thing about this is when I take this out to use it on my hammock I could put my food in this and anything else that the bears or mountain lions might smell put in this tie to this hoist this up 20 feet off the ground about 50 feet downwind of me perfectly safe now in this seat of summit I have my pillow my spare socks, um, my uh, thermals, and a few other things. But that really compacts it down. pocket over here, I got the water straw, the filter, and the Leatherman little light. Over here, I have the 22 and the compass. Um, I have my gloves on the outside. I'll be going in at night. My jacket on top, because I'll be going in at night. Here. It's Saturday night. It's probably about. 9.30 I'd say, 9, 9.30 on a Saturday night. I just left a friend of mine. I dropped her off in uh, at home and she didn't believe she's going to be at home and she said a nice warm flannel sheets. <laughs> and uh, she couldn't believe I was going to come up here and spend the night up here. Okay, I checked with the I checked with those miners back there. They're always up here. It's 10.14, 10.15 now, probably. Anyway, I made it, Marion. Uh, she and I were doing a little, there's one of those centipedes. Your daughter would be freaking out right now. Millipedes. Anyway, we uh, were in Old Town Claremont. We had a few margaritas, beer, and some wine. <laughs> And now I'm going on a night hike. <laughs> How smart is that, huh?
Okay, I'm at heat and fat. I'm hook up to this tree and this tree. And when I pack my stuff, I pack it in, in the, from the lightest to the heaviest. In this case, the heaviest here would be my food. But I always put my shelter on top. So when I open it up, that's the first thing I pull out and I can set it up. Then it's a tent, I put my pack inside. If it's a hammock, I can set everything on top. Get it up off this the ground. Hennessy, Hennessy Hyperlite size zip. I, I added a couple of these little rings for when I bring my Winston fly rod. I can keep that sleep with that inside here. I don't want anybody walking off with it. Milling coffee. Maybe I'm away. There's another guy there, friend of mine. I hear him say, "Hey, Pharaoh, Alan." He, I met him about a year ago in a parking lot. My brother was dropping me off, and uh, he saw me in my videos and recognized me. I see him every once in a while. All these guys up here know each other though, and by now most of them know me. Personally. But look over here. You see these little faint trails um, along here, really faint. Those are mountain sheep. Mountain sheep coming down or going up. If you if you were stepping on with your body weight and your foot not spread out on four hoofs, they slide, it would make a big difference. Those are not human. Those are mountain goat, mountain sheep. They cross right here in this area from the west to go down and spend the day over in Coldwater Canyon. But look at that. The mud's not even dry yet. See this like bighorn sheep ahead of me. Might get lucky. There's a spring right there running down the mountain. Yeah, right in the corner there. Now you follow that all the way up there. The spring is actually coming out of the it says that's the Stanley Miller mine. The yeah. spring is actually coming out of the mine. It's a heck of a climb up there though. Yeah, How far did. back does the mine go? Uh, long way. It's a big mine. They had a, uh, not a stamp mill up there, but a big round ball mill up there. They used mercury. Ball milled and worked with mercury. He said the mine goes back pretty far. It was right there. You go that way. You hear the mine from the other corner up there too. Your name's Keith, right? Uh, my name's Kenny. I hear Kenny. One more time. What's your name? I, I won't ever forget it again after this. Alan. Alan. Okay. Uh, very nice to meet you. You too, man. To Dave. Yeah. So that's the Stanley Miller mine. You can see that on the map. That's where it is. I'm going to show you guys something really cool that I've never seen before. I just run into it and obviously I'm not going to tell where it is for a good reason. But it's one of the most incredible finds I've seen back here. Look at this. You have a swing. You can sit here, backrest here, you have a swing. Get a table, a grill. Look at this. <gasps> Look at that. Wow. Check that out. Look at this. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Get your fry pan up there. Grill, some glow sticks. It's a metal screen, mesh screen with tarps over it. Look at this. You got yourself a little stove right here. Whoa. Somebody's cooked on this recently. It's hot. 
probably last night. Ooh, yeah, the metal's hot too. Wow. Look at this. Look at a window. It's cool, huh? This is pretty cool, huh? shelter. This thing here probably weighs 400 pounds and it's hanging by, oh it's cable, quarter inch cable. Wow. Down your old pork, pork, whittling, smoking a pipe. What? <laughs> I won't edit that out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's get out of here. As you can see, I've fallen in twice. One time bad. Impact when I hit, blood squirted out from under my nail. That'll turn black, just like that one. Okay guys, I ran into the seventh prospector that I know. <laughs> and spent a little time catching up with all of them. Would probably subtract two hours out of my uh, hiking time. I have six hours until sundown. I have almost eight miles left to go. Treacherous miles. I'm mean, crossing back and forth this. You're averaging maybe a mile an hour. So it's all uphill. So I'm not going to make it to my destination. So my destination, my home for tonight, is this. How cool is that? Now, let me tell you a little bit about this place. Who do you think built this? Backpacker Dave. The guy on my previous videos. He lived in this for four years. He told me about where it was, and I never saw it, because it's way back off the trail, kind of hidden. Anyway, he lived here for four years. And uh, tonight, this is my go. home. The sun's gonna start going down a couple hours. What I did now, the Tyvek, the heat sheet underneath, then I put my under quilt down. Actually, I put the thermorest, the half thermorest. And then I put my under quilt down. And then I put my over quilt above it. Basically, a bed inside of a bivy. I have my pillow there. Because, undoubtedly, under these rocks and things, there's scorpions. Yeah, and here's me with bare feet, huh? Undoubtedly, there's scorpions. And... They'll come out and look for a nice warm place tonight, and they'll be underneath me. When I lift this in the morning, you'll probably see some. So I'd rather not have them climb in bed with me. I got my prayer flags flying. <laughs> my Tibetan prayer flags. Actually, it's my bandana just drying off. I'll be eating dinner here, I believe. Actually, maybe here. I'm not sure. Maybe inside. But uh, My tarp got a little wet. It's drying. It's almost dry. My boots and socks got soaked. They're drying a little bit. I do have spare socks. I'll be using those, but dry these the best I can so I don't have to carry them out. I did bring a, a trash bag for carrying out wet stuff. It's not a problem. Huh. Okay. I've got 
got my stove here. Put some more wood on the fire. It's getting, I'm getting warm. See, it warms the rocks, and then the rocks put up the warmth. But outside, it is cold. The only thing I have out there is my shoes. It's still drying. Now I got my stove. This water I just scooped out of the river. This I scooped out two and a half hours ago. I put some tablets in there. Um, so it's not ready yet. I probably could drink it, but to be safe. Now, for lunch, I'm going to have this chicken teriyaki with rice. I'm inside the bug net. I'm just gonna touch my face just a little bit because the ridge line's not not up because the diameter of this stone shelter is not big enough. But I mean it's fine. It's better than waking up with a scorpion under you. So this is where I'll sleep tonight. Okay, six eighteen. Uh, I just heard on the radio it's supposed to um. I only get two AM radio stations back here, but I heard it's supposed to rain sometime around noon. That gives me just about six hours to get out of here. So I'm gonna, I, I don't want to cut in the rain. These rivers swell quick. So I'm going to uh, get breakfast going, get some coffee going while I'm packing and get out of here. This one full of water, and this one full of water. In my canteen, I got one drink left. I only need about three or four drinks to get out of here, maybe. So, um, this will do breakfast and tea. Breakfast and coffee. And this will be added to this. I'm purifying it by boiling it. Straight out of the river. Okay, guys. Last of the shelter. Uh, found that fork out back. Found that ashtray out back. So, I've picked up any trash in the area. I'm gonna carry it out with me. That's the cost of my rent for the night. So I'm leaving the place in better shape than it was. If any of you do find this and use it, please do the same. Here's how much trash I'm taking out. A lot of water bottles and fuel bottles, empty fuel cells, um, fuel cans, tuna cans. Taking my coffee to go, I'm gonna get out of here. Taking my little project that I'm gonna work on, that wood, with me. Back here I passed a dried waterfall pretty high up. I've come by here uh, right up to the snow melt and that thing just coming out so fast it's not even touching the wall, it's shooting off any, into the water. And here's another one here, a small spring, that moss. But look at this, some old prospectors <laughs> camp. He's got the uh, first edition Hennessy. <laughs> His shovel, his gold pans, everything, sluice box. But uh, this doesn't belong to you. You come up on this, don't touch, don't rummage through it, just keep moving. Leave it alone, have some respect for the guys. They work hard for what they get. I just talked to a guy and he said up here, I'm almost back to the bridge to nowhere. I mean, I'm flying. I am flying. I, I, I recognize some of these turns and I know I'm, I'm probably two turns from the bridge nowhere. And he says, by the bridge nowhere, there's two or three huge mountain sheep with the horns all the way around. So uh, he didn't have a camera though. So he says, I'm never leaving home without a camera. Okay, this is the wall that marks the bridge to nowhere, right around this turn. So the sheep were somewhere in this area. He said up on a rock. I'm thinking that one over there, which means they've already gone over to cross the Coldwater Canyon 
Yeah, look at that. There's a bridge. A five mile mark. So I'm as good as out of here. I got five easy miles. Oh, there's a nice tent down there. It's a nice one. Fair design. Here, <sighs> sheepy, sheepy. <laughs> For those of you out of staters, out of countryers, or just plain don't know, Bridge Nowhere is the end of the uh, road, the, of the road that used to come up through East Fork. They made it this far, they blasted through that tunnel. That whole hill is hollow. There's a slide on either side. Too dangerous to even think about going in. Somebody built the tunnel on the other side, but I've seen where about 200 feet up, the whole side of the mountain just gave away and all came down. There's no way you're gonna dig that out again. Anyway, uh, this is as far as the road got. 1938 flood wiped it all out. It was never rebuilt. Now, it's private property. But you can cross it. You just can't hang out on it. They airlifted these two things in here. And they have bungee jumping. You go online, bridge nowhere. You can do bungee jumping off of this. That's where all the stuff is. There's a group coming in. We'll pass them on the way out. I think it's $199 if you do it online. It's like $120 if you, if you just show up here. Reason for that is all the paperwork. I'm nearly out. I uh, just passed Kevin, Keith, and all those other guys. They're permanent fixtures back here. In five weeks, out too. Something like that. Kenny, uh, Dave, David. A lot of Daves back here. They're all cool guys. It's like I say, you see a tent? It belongs to one of those guys. They work hard. They maintain the air. They clean up trash like this. I'm, I'm bringing out about five pounds of trash. They pack out all their trash, plus any other going in and out. They clean stuff up. So show them a little respect. Leave their stuff alone. Look it up there. Let's see. I didn't pass any sheep coming out. But what I did pass is two girls going up and one of them fell on the water. So she's holding her pants and walking up in her wet panties. <laughs> so it's like a, a cross breed of, breed of the Sasquatch. But sure, sure was better seen than a mountain sheep. <laughs> I've seen mountain sheep plenty of times on the trail. But uh, female Sasquatch, it's always a good find. When you see those stone barriers that used to support the road, you are two stream crossings from the trailhead. So I'll be there in 10, 15 minutes. First thing I'm gonna do, go down the hill, get me a bacon lettuce tomato sandwich. <laughs> that scrambled eggs that I got from Packy Gourmet, I couldn't even eat it. It was bad, really bad. I'm gonna stick with the mountain house breakfast skillet. They rule, a Doyle rules. <laughs> I'm on the home stretch, two more bends. Just past Heaton. I just dropped off all the trash, all the propane canisters, all the fuel canisters and everything. I did, I did keep the uh, plastic bottles and the aluminum cans. I may as well get paid for Carrying them out. <laughs> okay, I'm back out. That big package on the top are those two pieces of uh, root, root uh, wood. The roots. I'm gonna turn them into a lamp, hopefully. So, uh, back in my car. Okay, there's the wood. Two pieces. One's going to be the base. The one with the hole will be the base. And the other one's going to be the light. I already have it all pictured in my mind. It'll look really cool when I'm done. I threw it in the fire. I was going to burn it and I, I saw the lamp. I saw the lamp hidden inside. <laughs> I'm going to try to make a lamp. Okay, driving home. Look at that. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> oh man. No backpack and food can hold a candle to this. That's good. See you guys in the next one.